I want to welcome you into my study. Uh, I want to take a little bit of time each week following our Sunday morning messages and just kind of connect together to review what we talked about on Sunday, uh, give kind of an overview for those who may have missed the message. But more importantly, we don't want to just be hearers of the word. We want to be doers of the word also. That's the whole purpose behind living it. And so what we want to do is ask some application questions. We want to interact together uh, through the web to be able to just share what God is saying to us and how God is challenging us to uh, live the word of God that we've heard. So on Sunday, we focused on the God of life from Psalm 23. Our good shepherd knows the way through the valley of the shadow of death. There were two primary points that we looked at as Jesus has given his life in exchange for us, his sheep. We first of all saw that our good shepherd will lead us through the grave. David sings the song, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David here gives us two important reminders about why we can have confidence that our shepherd will lead us through the grave. The first is one we may not want to really think about, and that is that everyone comes to the grave. Hebrews 9.27 tells us that everyone must die once, then they are judged. No one will escape death. You and I have an appointment that we can't get away from. I can miss a dentist appointment. <laughs> I look forward to missing dentist appointments, but I will not miss the appointment with death. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 2 says, We all must die, and everyone living should think about this. Solomon's not being morbid, but he wants us to be mindful. Mindful of the reality that life is short, and in the end, there is an end. Uh, in the uh, sermon notes that you'll find attached, I have a copy of the Dash poem. It talks about how that little dash, the, that little line between the day of our birth and the day of our death, that's what's really most important. How will we live our dash? Psalm 90 verse 12 says, Teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. None of us knows the number of our days. We don't know when the last grain of sand will fall through our hourglass. Our parents prepared for the day of our birth. Wisdom teaches us to prepare for the day of our death. So how will you and I live today mindful that our life does in fact have an end? Are there some things that we need to change in our day-to-day -day lives? Are there some habits that uh, maybe need to be rearranged or priorities that need to be adjusted? Are we wasting some valuable time? Are there some relationships uh, that maybe we need to look at in our life? Are there some that need to maybe be broken off because they're leading us in the wrong direction? Or are there some relationships that are in need of some TLC that maybe there's some bitterness or unforgiveness, some unresolved issues? What would God have us to do to uh, prepare for that day when our life comes to an end by how we live today? The second thing David showed us is that no one needs to face the grave alone. The journey through the valley of the shadow of death causes David to focus his attention on God, the good shepherd who leads us through the grave. Notice the change in David's vocabulary as he sings the 23rd Psalm. He begins saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Here, it's as though you and I are the one that David is singing to, and God is just kind of a bystander off in the wings listening to David's song. But when he comes to verse 4, there's a dramatic shift in the way that David addresses things. Now David turns his focus to God. He sings, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You see, David turns his face towards God. Where he was singing a song to us and God was in the wings, now he's singing directly to God. And he focuses his, his attention there. You see, we need not be afraid of death because when we choose to face the Good Shepherd, when we turn our hearts towards God, we can have confidence to know that he will be there when our time of death comes. Jesus said in John 14, verses 2 to 3, Trust me, there's plenty of room in my Father's home. If that weren't so, I would have told you. Uh, I wouldn't have told you, rather, that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you. And if I'm on my way to get a, your room ready... I'll come back and get you so that you can live where I live. I wonder today 
Are you confident that when the time comes for your life to come to an end, that the good shepherd Jesus will be there to welcome you into eternity? Have you come to that place where you really have turned to God? Because when death comes, God's not going to force himself on any of us. May we have that confidence that he will be there for us because we turn to him each and every day. Now is a time that you can choose to trust in Jesus as your good shepherd. The second thing that we focused on this past week was that our good shepherd will lead us through our grief. Grief is a journey through the valley of the shadow of death. It, it, it's a reality that grief lingers in our life, that we may come to a funeral service and then uh, go on to a luncheon with family and friends. We may have a time of laughing and sharing some stories together. And yet, when it's all said and done, we find ourselves still mourning, still in grief. However, grief is not limited to just death. Grief and sorrow comes from the disappointments of life. And that's really one of the things that death is. It's the greatest disappointment. We have hopes and dreams for the one that has passed on, things that we had planned that we wanted to do, but now they're never going to happen. What are some disappointments, some little griefs, if you will, that maybe have happened in your life? Maybe it was a job that you didn't get. Maybe uh, it was you asked somebody out on a date and they said no. Uh, there's all kinds of disappointments. How can the day-to-day -day disappointments of life help us to learn that God is with us even in the midst of our disappointment and sorrow? How can you come to understand God better? And how can the grief of those ordinary, if you will, disappointments, how can that grief help us when we face the greatest grief that we will ever face in life, the grief that comes with death. God wants to lead us through our grief. God will make himself known to us in the midst of our grief. Even our ordinary grief, we can come to know that God is familiar with our suffering. He's familiar with the way that we think and, and the disappointment that comes into our lives. In Psalm 139, the psalmist writes about how God knows everything about us. There's nothing that is hidden from God's understanding about our lives. He's familiar when we rise and when, when, when we sit down. He knows what we're doing. He knows every thought. He, he knows the words that we would speak before a single one is on our tongue. Nothing is hidden from God. He is familiar with our suffering, whether it be the suffering and disappointment from just the journey through life and the things that come unexpectedly into our lives, or whether it is the great grief that comes with death, God knows our suffering. And we need to understand that in the midst of our suffering and sorrow, Jesus will lead us through our grief into joy. Isaiah 51.11 says, Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. I encourage you to look at that verse in the context of what happened for the Jewish nation as they had the great disappointments of being taken out of their homeland. Many of them had the sorrow of leaving loved ones behind, perhaps without even having had a chance to have a funeral because their life was taken as Nebuchadnezzar came in and captured the city and wreaked havoc into their lives, taking them into captivity the great disappointments, but the Lord promises to bring them out of sorrow, out of grief, and bring them into joy. God wants to lead us in the same way. In the midst of our grief, we also can come to learn that God is good. Psalm 25, 7 and 8 says, By your loving kindness, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and right is the Lord. Psalm 100, verse 5 says, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. We can know in the midst of grief that God is good. And his goodness can help us to accept the tragedy that comes with death, the sorrow in our suffering. And yet we will still question why. Why him? Why her? Why now? Why in this way did the person that we love come to that death, or maybe it's the life disappointment. Why did this happen? Why didn't God allow me to get the job or get into college or whatever it might be? Why? Why? When it comes to death, God does not owe us any explanation. His ways are higher than ours, but I think the prophet Isaiah does give us a glimpse into one of the reasons why 
God allows death to come when it comes. Isaiah 57, 1 to 2 says, Good people pass away. The godly often die before their time, but no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. For those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. You see, we've really come full circle. God, our good shepherd, leads us through the grave and through our grief. You see, because for the person who dies that's a believer, God takes away their grief and in death because the reality is they don't struggle with the grief. They're the first one to accept the, re the reality of their death. They enter into eternity with Jesus. We struggle with the finality of death. What is your life for you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes, is what James says. Or the psalmist says uh, that the Lord saw us before we were born, and every day of our lives was recorded in the Lord's book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. I wonder, do we really believe that? That God knows our, the day of our birth and the day of our death? He knows the end from the beginning? God is in control. May we find comfort in that reality and that Jesus was there in the moment of our loved one's death because he leads us through our grief and through the grave. That is our promise. Are you struggling today with grief, a grief that lingers? In what ways might God, our good shepherd, be lovingly nudging you through your grief? Perhaps the Lord wants to make himself known to you. This is a time that God wants to reveal himself. What are some things that God's wanting to show you about himself, that you can come to know God better in the midst of your grief? Maybe it's the grief of something that's just in day to day. Maybe it's not with death, but that will prepare you for the time when death does come into your life as a loved one passes on. May you come to know God better through your grief. Or how might God want to help you to stop focusing on your pain, the, the sadness and the sorrow, so that you can begin to look to others and see that you can be a blessing in their life? Jesus wants to lovingly nudge us through our grief. May God help you. It's my prayer that these two simple realities that David shows us from Psalm 23, our God of life, the Good Shepherd, will lead us through the grave and through our grief will be a blessing to you hope that you'll share your comments and your thoughts about what God is teaching you in this time. God bless you, and as always, I love you all.